actually have to give credit to my sister. When she heard the concept of movement, the art, you know, the mind and the senses, and also the walking grounds, uh, you know, art and movement, so art and motion, and uh, so that would work. Art in Motion is combining my love of uh, bicycling, the beautiful Lake Wobegon Trail with nature. We have about 38 acres on a property here with art, a place for a platform from young artists or uh, artists that are making their way to have a platform to exhibit their stuff, community engagement for art, and also uh, nutritious food with craft beer and ice cream. Easily you could spend a half day here enjoying the property. Make sure you put on there, we look like hell because we've been biking for 12 miles. <laughs> I think you all look pretty good for biking 12, 12 miles. Oh my goodness. Half this building is an art exhibition space, so we always have a new art uh, exhibit going on, and we rotate that uh, part of it every two to four weeks. And plus we have an art studio where it's engagement within community. It might be a free art class, it might be a structured art class. Currently we have a couple artists in residence uh, working out of the studio, but they engage with the community and gives them exposure as well. have planted on the grounds a pollinator. It's a Stearns County program where it's habitat for the monarchs and the bumblebees. So we have about seven acres planted out there. So our theme for 2021 was the monarch butterfly and kind of allows us to play off of that in our art concepts. Uh, there's a beautiful uh, glass mosaic of a monarch butterfly on the wall. Uh, see the butterfly in there? It's right there. All you're gonna do is I'm gonna take off the, the lid and you're gonna put your finger there and let the butterfly crawl up on your finger. And then you're gonna slowly set it down on one of these flowers, okay? Think you can do that? Mm -hmm. I'm the art coordinator at Art in Motion. I think that this gallery is unique because it breaks down a lot of barriers that people might have to going to see a white wall gallery show. We have a garage door that we often have open when, on really nice days and you can literally just bike right up to the gallery, right on in. We attract people that don't actively seek art shows, they just come here because there's food and beer and then they enter an art show. We exhibit artists that are of any level, pre-high school to you know professional artists that have exhibited internationally. In just our short time of existence, we've covered all those bases. It's like a party every day, or like a social event every day, and I get to connect with so many people. We've made so many friends just through this job. People genuinely want to connect with each other when they're here. Like, they'll talk to strangers or they'll talk to us, and like, we'll be really candid. Greg is awesome, and he just like, walks around and talks to people and has long conversations with them at their table every day. And that's an energy that I think the rest of the staff also bring to it, and I think it's really fun. So currently we do have an outdoor art exhibit. It is made up of 857 pinwheels and little uh, butterflies. The pinwheels were made as a week-long art project with the community. The 857 pinwheels and butterflies represent, sadly, the number of bicyclists that were killed in 2018. And we are doing that in support of uh, biker safety and biker awareness. And we look to do that every year and hopefully the number goes down going forward.
I grew up in Holding Ford, went away for 30 years. My, my career was in agriculture, I was in, in the grain trading. So when I retired, I wanted a little slower pace of life. So I'm coming home. My parents still live here. And, uh, you know, I love my hometown. Part time? Waitawa? Young? Yeah, those names were around when I was in so nothing's changed too much. So let's go by the tractor. A lot of people said this will never work in a small town. I want to kind of maybe prove them wrong. I think rural areas are in need of the art culture without having to, you know, drive 100 miles to Minneapolis-St. Paul. And uh, it's kind of nice to have people come here and appreciate it. So my goal is to create a viable business with art and the trail in a small community. And that's uh, what I'm out to prove that it can be successful. I've always been kind of a rural person. I grew up in a rural area. I went to college in a rural area. I have a very deep obsession with cows and chickens, which comes through in my own personal art. I also have an emotional attachment to this land. It's beautiful and like you don't have to struggle to find a parking spot and like <laughs> there's just, it's just, I don't know, I just like it. We find that when people come out here, it's not 30 minutes stay, and then they end up staying two to three hours at a time. It's a great place for conversation. Uh, we don't have news on, we don't have the ball games on, and we do rotate art occasionally up on the big screen, but it's just a great environment to be in the moment and have good conversation. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram. Online at 967cram.com.